Yeah, we saw a cast of ban okay. last time. Okay. There was one I was missing that I, was like a, they, they, like a ban. They will most likely take a Nidalee here. At least that's what I would think they would do. Oh, yeah. Because last time they had so much trouble actually sieging a base, and Nidalee was banned previously. So they subbed that ban out for the Yasuo now, and I think that's what they will go for. Keep in mind that the Braum now has been left open that's true. last time. So some of these engaged tools are here if they want it. Uh, of course, Lulu also available for these guys. Maybe that'll be a pickup there. We've seen a lot play some support mid laners, but Frank Feng Gaming taking the time to make the choices. Still want okay. the first pick, uh, you know, first round Lulu, same as last time. So, okay. liking the flex pick. Yeah, definitely liking that flex pick. But I was going to say, if they don't take Nidalee, it's going to go over to Lolpro. So good. So that, good. That's and a really good. Prom. That's a really good first round draft there by Lolpro. It does still leave Leona up. Uh, so, you have kind of a way back in for maybe Eater to start fights out if they do want to go for this kind of, kind of composition uh, with. We heard Crumbs talk about it. Basically, if you don't ban the top of your junglers, you'll still play them, even though you've got guys like Rengar and Jarvan waiting in the wings. Lucian comes through as well, so Frank Fang trying to take away some of the champs that Law Pro is playing. Uh, and we'll see what else their, their comp has for us in the end game. Yeah, and uh, the big thing here is the Nidalee. I don't know why they didn't first pick it, because that they had the Lulu last time. It didn't work out extremely well for them, especially when in synergy with Yasuo. They got to that point, but they just couldn't crack the base. Now they have to deal with the poke of Nidalee and I thought it was going to be taken by LOD if they didn't pick it up for Baby Zeus, and that's exactly the case here. And they get Braum on the back of it, too. And then, they get, of course, they get the same picks as last time. Yeah. Except Ziploc is now on. Yeah, jungler swapping jungler champions. Swapping around. Oh, least, least, and those still the grabs here. Neither team adding any jungle bands. They didn't seem to think that was going to be very important. Hoodstomp goes old school, though, picks up Graves for himself. And, of course, his team realizes it's a different team comp. Yep. Don't need Cog anymore. Go for the Graves. Some extra wave clear, which is very big. I. Havoc expect Static Shiv second as well, just blindly right now to help the team defend. Keep himself a little safer on that AD carry as opposed to Kog'Maw. Yeah. Go ahead and play. Go ahead and be tanky. Back. Thresh still grabbed now for Baby Eaters for a new pick, and Orianna comes in. So it will be the top lane Lulu for Nian Tonso up there. And uh, just enough ways to engage for the team. Hook, Ball, you know, Lee Sin. There's, there's ways to start it out, but if you can cut it back well enough, it at least still works. Yeah, definitely. But they, they want to engage this is what it looks like. Like, you don't want to kite backwards versus the middle. You want to go forward at them. Yeah, I'm talking about the law for trying to oh, yeah, kite yeah, back. Sorry, yeah, sorry. They, they're looking for the disengage, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. And Braum's fantastic at that. He can go ahead and lay down a slow zone, get himself out of there too. Yeah. Stand behind me, but actually get myself to you is what it's more like. It's like, you know, stand behind me, but you're already behind me, so let me get up back there with you. Let me just it. book it. Yeah, you keep running. I'll be near you as you run. Run a little bit faster, maybe. Yeah, that was a little too long for an ability name, so, <laughs> so we just <laughs> chopped it down. And I thought saying Playful Trickster was hard enough. Imagine that spotlight. Uh, Stand behind me, Slash. Keep running away. I'm going to help join you. Yeah, <laughs> not, not the best way to do it. So Shivana coming to come in for the top lane there. Shivana versus Lulu. Going to be the matchup that Hauntzer opts into in this lane, of course, with Kale Ban. He doesn't get to play that champion, so the lineups are here, and it's it's cool. It's well-rounded enough for Lawpro that they can, if it's not the Lodge show, they've got other champions to pick up some slack. Their team fight still won't be as good as Frank Fang Gaming, so. Yeah, they have a designated tank here in Shibana. Neen Tonso is going to bully around Hauntzer just a little bit in the early game if they go one-on-one. -on -one, which doesn't happen too often anymore in the Challenger series. Yeah. We'll have to see how they transition into that later game. Lolpro picked a better late game comp previously. Now it's kind of matched at this point. They both do very well in the late game. One's a poke composition, other one's displacement in a team fight. Mm -hmm. Got the Orianna on top of a Lulu Wild Growth, if possible. Yeah. If you can light it up. Let's see if they can get their way into these fights. It's still not a Leon. It's still not the completely obvious guaranteed hard engage. It's still skill shot reliant again, which is. So it is going to be some kind of a risk. To be honest, I haven't seen a single fight started out with Repel into Wild Growth. It's like, as much as I like, I want to see yeah. it happen. It's like, oh, the guaranteed engage. It's like, no, no one ever does that. Yeah. So uh, that one I don't think we're going to see. So it still is skill shot reliant. It still actually land the ways to get in. So um, to be honest, at least it's not on that team anyway. But uh, That's why we won't see it. Yes, <laughs> definitely will not see Repel Wild Growth this game. It's impossible. Um, yeah, basically, on the same target anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess you could repel on the target and that person gets wild growth. Okay, bigger than okay. The spider. So, so you're you not know, wrong. The the counterattack, I'm just <laughs> not what I meant to say. Anyway. Either way, yeah. So the engage, I think, to be honest, difficult for, for uh, Frank Gaming. It exists, but it is skill shot reliant, which is, to me, a big worry for that team. Yeah, Frank Gaming not having the best of easy hard engages here. 
they're gonna have to see what they end up doing in that later game. I mean, you can get Lee Sin into the back line. You can put, if there's a hook, if there's a skill shot with a Sonic Wave resonating strike, what can they do? We'll have to see. Level mm -hmm. one's gonna start out there and we're gonna see if the teams can out maneuver one another and get the advantage early on because the team comp stuff only really matters if you get yourself to a mid to late game scenario where you're fighting equal gold team fights. Right. So yeah. if you just like crush them because you took a dragon and an ace, like you can just close it out. Or that a uh, 60 minute equal gold or gold doesn't matter yeah. anymore. Then it's just who has better late game champs? Oh, Kogma? Oh, okay. Yeah. Frank Fang Gaming sitting in this brush right now. They don't have Baby Eater just yet. Heaven Time swaps out. So if a hook does land, oh, Ooh, nope. nice check. All right. He throws it far enough away that no hook was going to come out and catch him on this one. So. There's the pings. Guys know what's going on. Baby Eater will get... Oh, he's going to look for the hook after they spot a low H. No, nothing going to happen there. Javelin hits Captain Ziploc. He's got to be a bit careful. Lose about a third of his health. Trinket Ward comes out as they leave. And that got pinged out. Lol Pro saw them put that down. To keep... Great grouping there to keep Frank Fang Gaming on the back foot. Keep him out of the fight. And stop it from happening. Early sweeper from Heaven Time. Not going with the pink ward on Elise, which we see a lot of people do. Said he wants to sustain himself through the jungle. Make it so that he can gank the lanes, be healthy. Actually, no, he's standing right on top of it. What? Hmm? There it is. There's the pink ward. He hatched yeah. it. He hatched it. That's there what's we go. going on. It's beautiful. I was like, Perfect. okay, that's a little strange. And I'm like, oh, there it is. There we go. Whoop. We got this. So it looks like the late invade top lane is the scenario. We're actually just seeing... Uh, Nian just sort of watch this and say, are you? Yep, you are invading. Yep. Okay, guys, you guys know about this one. Standard invade pattern, you invade by your duo lane. They're leaving the AD carry of Hood Stomp just to chill and get that uh, that farm by himself. Where's the team going to make their moves around? Captain Ziploc soloing his red buff, though without uh, any help from the team. It will require Baby Eater helping just a little bit to grab the blue buff on the way out. And now just the standard junglers alongside the top laners. We have the wolves being done now by Heaven Time and Hauntzer, but now Ziploc, he's gonna go across the river. Let's see if the grass is greener on that side. Okay, so nice and safe right here on this one, and life is gonna be happy now for Frank Fang Gaming as they're gonna go two to two with buffs. Nian is gonna be helping that one just a little bit. Uh, interestingly enough, actually, we're seeing a pretty fast push by the FFG duo lane because as uh, with the earlier game, they're gonna push the wave in, push that win, and then at about three minutes, they walk up towards uh, the dragon. Yep, they're gonna get it right now in exactly three minutes. See if they can make it go back and forth and take no damage from it. All right, Baby Eater, if you can make this one happen. Now, no one else should nope. move. It's all about Baby Eater doing this. Now, the one thing is, actually, it's, it's uh, ruined by Lee Sin because the Q puts him into uh, point-blank range. So you've actually got to, like, walk back <laughs> out afterwards. <laughs> they're, they're, they're trying. <laughs> He's dancing it a little bit. It's enough to where they're safe. So, the right, goes down. Valiant effort. They'll regen. It's okay. Yeah, and especially since it's the support. doesn't have to be doing much in this early game. You have nobody against you in the lane. It's perfectly fine. They end up getting themselves a dragon. Now here's the thing is what you do with that dragon is you convert it into more vision, into wards, so that around the seven minute mark, you start contesting the buffs again mm -hmm. and convert that dragon lead into vision that converts it into actual objective control, into more gold, into more pushing power. Yeah. And what I really like about how fast they do the dragon as well, sub three minutes when they start it, is even if a team were to four zero push uh, the opposite side turret, they would kill the auto trip, but you'd have enough time to recall and defend the second tier. Uh, if you do like a three and a half, four minute dragon and your opponents end up four zeroing, uh, you can lose two turrets for dragon, which is not worth it. Uh, but when you go this fast, you actually get to trade dragon for turret, which is fine. It actually goes in your in your favor. So uh, the right play by FFG and of course Law Pro just goes through the standard two zero, the slow push setup to get as much farm as possible in the AD carry. I want to watch Lod a lot this game because last game. He had a ton of farm, and he was beating Baby Zeus for the longest time, actually in the end of the game, having a lot more farm than him. And he's the guy who's new to the mid laner, mm -hmm. mid lane position. Now he's on middle, where if you get farm, it's definitely going to transition into pressure. Yeah. Orianna, it's like, okay, I've transitioned into wave clear, and my ball creates a little zone that people don't want to be around, that's fine. But if you're Nidalee, it's just constant harass. And now, 
Ooh, he got the yeah. passive Ooh, he him. dodges the Q with the flash. Auto attacks will get the stun. Nian's not in a good spot. Nice uh, smoke screen as well. Gonna add some slows low. Gonna show up and not Ooh. enough damage, though. Nian lives with about 50 health on that one after the potion's ticking. Just survives with double Doran's ring. The potion. I think that potion might have saved him there. Just barely. Good rotation by low. Good lotation. Get himself Darn up right. to the top lane, get his passive, the concussive blows down, and gets the flash from Nian Tonso. Blows his own, blows his ignite, blows hood stomps, double summoners. Yeah. Use the heal for the extra distance closing. Yeah. You know what's actually funny is because Lo missed the uh, missed the Q, actually, uh, lots pretty. Oh, yeah, he's safe. He'll be okay. Yeah. Um, there was actually a way to be really um, hyper aggro with it and just do the flash auto attack to guarantee the stun to then follow up with the Braum Q, and that would have guaranteed the kill. Um, as it turns out, right, they, they ended up losing the summoners anyway just because of the Q missed. And there's a way to guarantee that kill by, by blowing summoners early and then guaranteeing the skill shot. And now we see both supports in the top lane, but one is supporting a Lulu, the other one supporting a Graves. A little bit more synergy in the AD carry with Braum. Hey man, Nian used to be an AD carry, so ah, you know, he's, true. he's used to this. Yeah, he's used to having support at his side. He'll be safe. Captain Ziploc gonna look for the top lane here. Pinging on the way. Hold on, there's a pink ward here. Let me, let, hold up, let me get this for you. No baby eater trying to set his team up for success. He may eat babies, but he also raises them too, so. Yes. Ziploc looking again for the mid lane, though. He's already got a ward down to ward hop too as well. He's going to look for that one. Lod, nice jump away, dodges the Q, and he's going to just lose some gold and XP. Heaven time waiting in the wings as well. Same level as Captain Ziploc. Ooh, Equal power shockwave. shockwave hits, good damage, and Lod burns his summoner heal. But there goes Heaven time. Low HP on Davies, who also burns the heal. Keep himself safe. He's gonna be okay. Hook not gonna quite land there. Gets a minion there. Nian gets stunned up, but he's okay. The Braum passive on two people there. Put stop. He's out of mana. And the Unbreakable comes out. See if he can do anything about this, but just harassment back and forth currently in the top lane. And the mid lane's getting shoved out right now. It looks like Baby Zeus is gonna want to back up and buy maybe a Chalice or something off of this. You normally don't just shove waves in the jungler unless you want to leave. Looks like that will be the case here. He's gonna get behind his turret and do that. So similar here for Heaven Time. Uh, will not stay to shove the second wave, interestingly. He's going to take his Wraith Camp instead. Yeah, he's going to go ahead, get himself a little bit of that jungle EXP. He might come back to that mid lane, but I think he wants to leave it for Baby Zeus, who may be back in time. Because Nidalee doesn't have a lot of shoving power. He's go gone into Cougar form. Go yeah. ahead and attempt to. We're going to have to see. Well, the other question is, look, does he even deny any farm at all with this sort of slower push? Right now, all those minions are actually alive. The wave's coming in. Looks like he'll miss... Maybe like a melee He'll and the cannon. He'll miss one and the cannon will take damage and then we'll see. Yeah, yeah that yeah. slow push. Maybe he's got a free back. He lost literally eight minion for backing there. Yep. So impressive. Stuff. Okay. Well, aside from like the CS ah. of the turret, but like, I mean, that, that's fine. Like, yeah. as he's far still got as the, the experience goes. from it, yeah. is the big thing. I think it's right here. Baby Zeus could freeze and actually um, deny a bit more gold next beat because like this push won't, won't do anything either because uh, Lod's got Cougar for him. He gets back to lane super fast, won't miss anything. So both mid laners got to uh, get very safe recalls. You kind of notice, right, push an immediate recall, and if you're fast enough, you can get back without missing. He's pushing so he can ward up and then go for the blue without anything being in the way. It's a nice right. pink ward there to cover his flank. And they took the time with that blue buff is the thing. Oh, yeah. Like, that's an eight-minute blue buff retake, which means these guys, uh, those buffs were up for a short time, and neither team actually went to go contest that. Um, uh, they had a dual lane bottom. Is that... They put their duo lane back down bottom now because Dragon is about to be up in 20 seconds. But LolPro has all of the coverage of it. But look at all the wards that are still in Frank Fang Gaming's inventory. They haven't placed them down yet to get control. That's true, actually. They yeah, have the they're... timer, but they haven't set up for it. It's a little interesting. Right now, LolPro has a good amount of vision kind of watching that entire side of the way towards Dragon. And it's going to be a potential advantage. You've got the smallest item lead here for Lod, who's actually gotten to upgrade the uh, book into a better book, the Amplifying Tome into the Fiendish Codex. Gives 10 more AP and 10 CDR, yep. so... Written by a better author. Some R.L. Stein book right there. Oh, man, you just took me back. Yep. You just took me back, them goosebumps. <laughs> All right. That's great. Well, Heaven Time's going to grab his red buff there. Dragon is back alive, and... Right now, LawPro not looking like they really care about this. They will have seen it respawn based on just that, that tick showing back up in the minimap. They're looking for a gank down bottom. They do have the Thresh Lantern gank. That's the, it's the right choice, though. If they, if they get anything happening down here, they're going to get Dragon. Lamb is trying to be in range to uh, let the uh, Lee Sin jump over the wall to him, but... 
I don't and think look at this, it's pushing. So like, Lawpro is going to be overextended to try this. To do anything here, they've like they can get XP. If they get gold, they can get caught. Here's the thing though, is that they see Heaven Time is on this side of the map. He's roaming on his way down. Yeah, if they engage now, mm -hmm. then he will still be. Yeah, he's he's just looking down because he's like they're puts off and low. Saying they're playing very aggressive right now. They're playing very forward from where they would normally play. Lee Sin is most likely here. Let's see what they get. Minion's taking a little bit of damage. Heaven Time walking on top of a ward. No one apparently saw that go down. They didn't let him know that was the case here. Fink Fink gaming their sweepers up, and he misses the ward. He misses the ward, so Ziploc's going to walk in here, and they won't know that he's been spotted. Oh, he sweeps, and he's like, hold on, guys. You might have missed one. He sees the body language. There we go. The ward's gone. Mm. Good take there. The hook coming out. Not hitting anybody. But the dragon is the big thing here that nobody's made a move for just yet. The teleports are up in the top lane for Nian Tanso, but not for Hauntzer. It will be up in just a second. They had this window with an advantage, but they've squandered it. Yeah, absolutely nothing happened now with this one. The ward's now going to be available, and uh, the other one's timing out, so... That's interesting now. Nothing happening for either of these teams. You're seeing a 500 gold lead, though, for Frank Feng Gaming. Top lane's actually holding fairly equal. It's the actual bottom lane where really the gold's coming in there. You've got a 15 minion lead there. Q lands from Ziploc. Not going to go any farther towards Lod. There are a ton of traps in that mid lane right now. Mm -hmm. Sitting all around the side. You cannot come from this right side without, without hitting a trap. At least it goes around behind towards Oriana. That's how he gets in. Lodge is going to wave clear, stay safe. Of course, having time to get spotted on his, on his way around. Baby Eater does not get stunned. Hood Stomp going to put some damage through. No Q quite lands in this one. And there we go. Heaven Time oh. gets it. Does a great job picking stuff up. He's doing a great job of all this. And now Heaven Time coming around the back side. Looks for Baby Zeus. Has to dodge away from the ball just a little bit. Staying safe so far, but yeah, it's... I mean, you look at how close the teams fought each other early game, and there are a lot of aggressive moves. And now these teams are playing so much more passively. Like, you're not seeing any ganks forced. You're seeing everyone kind of waiting around a counter gank, but if, you know, Q lands, like, well, he's by the turret, never mind. Like, yeah. We're seeing no flashy plays this game. See, Frank Fang Gaming, they have a really good first four minutes, but then they don't set up for the second dragon, and this is the same story as last game. First dragon, Frank Fang, second dragon, LOL Pro, because they were just in position for it. Looking a lot, but not enough health. I don't think they can fight this at all. Hoodstop putting good damage down low, showing up as well. Yeah, Frank Van Gaming starting to lose control of this bot lane right here. They've got to be real careful. The team shows up to contest, but they don't really have the health bars. In fact, we're going to have Teleport coming in from Hanser as well to help secure this one. And it's going to be the attempted smite for Captain Ziploc. He gets pushed around, losing a lot of health. The Graves ulti and the Javelin comes through, plus the Dragon. Law Pro completely outplay that fight. Yeah, they wait for it. They... <laughs> Basically say, you have to do this last bit of damage before you can smite it. And they end up killing Ziploc. Doesn't use his flash, which is a little caveat there, a little thing that he can walk away with and be like, okay, that's fine. You know, that's that's okay with it. It's you. only first blood on a dragon. At least my flash is up. Yeah. But at the same time, gave up a thousand gold lead now to Lol Pro, And they're going to start pushing it down bottom. And there's the dive. Three on two. They go right for Latman. Teleport coming in now. Is it going to be enough in time to save Baby Eater? Yes, it is. The wild growth comes in. And a hood stop is not in the right spot. The turnaround. Damage could not come through in time. The damage oh, was the split between the two. Flash away now for Brahmi. He's got nowhere to go. Got nice it. glitter lance. Double kill for Nian. And now Lod's in the wrong spot. Completely over aggressive from Law Pro. Nian Tonso, he does have some chase potential, but he's not going to go for it because Nidalee's just going straight through bushes there. They dodge all of the javelins coming out from Lod when he reaches that bottom lane. Great teleport for the wild growth save. And now they're going to be able to push this turret because all five members are here. Me and Tonso actually back. So four members down bottom. Well, that's as much damage as they can. Look for oh. right there. Oh no, Baby Eater eats a javelin. Maybe a baby javelin. Now, Heaven Time is in a bad spot. Gets kicked in the wall, but you know what? He's got Repel. Nothing to do there. Captain Ziplocs, one hit from dead. Yeah, he flashed. But the thing is. Man, he barely gets away from that one. That was close. Didn't need the flash, to be honest. He was out of turret range already, but. Couple of misplays here. Hansen now pushing the top and getting a lot of damage down. He could commit to the turret, doesn't choose to do so. He said he will clear another minion wave as uh, Nian Tons is going to have to clear minions under the turret here. Yeah, the blue buff might be at risk here too because it's Shivana. Very easy. Just pull it off and just kill it really quickly. Might come up with two blue buffs now. And the objective control in Law Pro's favor. Big thing here is actually Heaven Time has Sightstone on Elise before he even completes his Ancient Golem. Yeah, we've seen this actually. 
We saw that the first time as well on his Lee Sin. He went uh, Sight Stone really, really early. Watch this fight again. And notice that they keep splitting their focus between the two champions. Yeah, that's true. There's auto attacks onto either of them, but there's the wild growth. Ignite taking a Baby Eater just walks out of there. The Javelin's being dodged out. He doesn't, do he doesn't dodge the later one. But the Glitter Lance is barely making contact there. And then they trail the fight off. And good Cocoon. Mm -hmm. to keep Lod safe. Did you know that for uh, Brahm's death animation, his shield falls on him? Yes. It's pretty cool. Kind of like gasps for his last breath and then... Ugh. It's it's less brutal than Trindamir's, where his sword <laughs> impales him, but... Oh, I think my I think my think the one that makes me cringe every time is Aurelia's. Oh, man. Where it just explodes and... That one's rough. Gets her right in the gut. Yeah. Point. And her scream. Okay, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Makes death me... animations in Lala are pretty brutal, to be honest. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Cool. All right, Ward now into the jungle. You're actually seeing a few of these from uh, Law Pro, actually. Oh. Hanser, after he pushed that top wave, got one by the blue buff to spot things out. Lod watching the uh, Wraith camp, though Sweeper's going to get rid of that one. Um, but Law Pro making a very real effort to get Ward control, one that Frank Fang Gaming really don't have. You can see, right, there's a, a scattering of wards. Of course, there's only one outer turret down, so you can't get super deep wards, but it's enough to know if they're getting stopped when they yeah, push things like this. Look at that That's difference cool. in ward control there. Law Pro, they've taken this game. Oh, shockwave! And they decide to transition their lead into just more vision, so they can create more of a lead for themselves. Th that sight stone is actually coming up big on Heaven Time. It's working really, really nicely so far for these guys. Now the Ancient Golem is done. He's got an item lead thanks to the uh, extra gold overall that Law Pro's picked up, and it's a 1,000 gold difference so far between these teams. More wards coming in for Baby Eater and Co. And that ward goes down as well. Wave clear pretty easy, though, for a Lucian and an Orianna. So they can hold this one for a while. Hook's going to land in a hood stomp. They could get the flay on the two, but nothing else to follow up. Low is there to keep them alive. Actually, nice dissonance. But you've got a blue of Nidalee healing things up. And we see Captain Ziplog off on the side here. Nian Tonso has teleport once again. The status update of the fight. But Nidalee, he wants to go off to the side. Lod wants to poke them. He's actually looking for poke from behind. This is nice. I like this choice. Ziploc loses a third of his health. And can they stay to defend the turret? Because Javelin's going to do some real damage. Ziploc's got to leave this. He's one Javelin from death. We have Niantanza coming across now down the river to try to join this fight. They've got 20 seconds. He will be there in time for the minion wave. At the priority that Frank Fang Gaming put on Lulu and Champion Select it over Nidalee, and having that being picked up with Braum first round for Lolpro is showing here because 2 0, 100% kill participation, both kills onto that Nidalee. Lod, a lot of CS on his side too. Yeah. He's just going to start chunking people down with the needlessly large and even more later on. I mean, that's the weird thing, right? It's like both first picks are working well for the team. Because Nian also, like, completely turned oh, around yeah. the bot lane fight. No other champion. He's 2 0 Exactly. Yeah. No other champion would have turned around the bot lane fight the way he did. The support to save one to make the dive pad into the chase kills. But, yeah, unless that works against Nidalee by late game, like, an unanswered Nidalee does more than an unanswered Lulu. And that's really the key here is. Unless someone stops Lot, that's going to take over the game. Well, I don't know if it's going to be unanswered, because the thing that's unanswered right now is Hanser on that Tier 2 turret. He's trying to rotate around now, because Nien Tonsil's made his way up. Seeing him try for this one. They're going back and forth, dodging a few javelins there. Hook's going to land on the LOH. They're going to land a Q, a little bit of damage. They're going towards Hanser as well. They group up a big, a little bit of burst comes through from the Graves. But now, Lo taking a whole bunch of pain. They're trying even harder. He's dropped dangerously low on the health bars. The poke. That comes up, Frank Fan Gaming actually good enough to get some real damage down. The blue buff has timed out for Lot as well, so he doesn't have too many javelins left in the repertoire, but it's enough to keep him safe. Missed. Not hitting anybody there. Now the back's coming out for Lol Pro. Frank Fan Gaming have an opportunity to push up a little bit since it's a three on five. And the thing here is there isn't a lot of wave clear for for Lol Pro, they really have to rely on the Graves Buckshot. But the poke is what's really going to do it here. If they can get good javelins off, mm -hmm. then Frank Fang Gaming they've gotten a few. Gonna have to pull off. Not enough to earn a turret, but they've gotten a few. Dragon has come back for some time actually. And you're seeing the team now group up down to the bottom side to go pick this one up. See if they can do it. The health bars 
pretty decent on both sides. Both a little injured, but enough to fight with. And we'll see if Frank McGammy can make their way in. This dragon still losing health is dangerously, dangerously low. And Ziploc will look for the steal. Do it again. Goes try, in, picks up the smite, and gets a lantern out. Beautifully done. But Hanser wants to battle, but this might not be the right choice. Hooked in onto Low, who does pop the ulti. Latman gets a bunch of heals to keep himself alive. And they will survive this, making it. Zero for zero, but a great steal from Captain Ziploc. Yeah, that puts them back in the game. Ziploc attempted that last time, and too many members of Law Pro pulled off of the dragon. The fact that you can throw the Lee Sin in, you can dissonance off of the ball that he brought in with him, and smite at the same time is really big for bursting down objectives. Mm -hmm. Exceptionally done. I gotta say, it's a very, very nice play by Frank Van Game. It actually puts the game back to a 1,000 gold deficit. They've, they've clawed that one back a little bit thanks to good smite skills. Now that sight stone's done for Captain Ziploc as well, so he's managed to close to match his opposition here. But I, I question sort of the fact that the other team's making headway in this game and how hard it was for Frank McGamey to make their way into the base. I know it's really early, but I'm almost saying who's got better late game already because of the way these games are being played between these two teams. And I gotta say, I like Law Pro in that case one, one more time. Yeah, I definitely like the Nidalee pick, for sure. Yeah, like champions like that. I thought it was going to be something that Frank Fang Gaming would prioritize, but LOL Pro, they prioritize it over everything else for the most part. And there's good reason for that. Lot is doing a lot of work right now. They almost got an objective mid, and Nidalee's only going to get stronger and, and scarier, especially against your squishy squishy members of your team. Yeah. You're not going to have a magic damage, a magic resistance tank on this team either. Yeah, th by end game, javelins are like, so doing the the quick explanation of this one, right? Like, end game javelins would do more damage than early game javelins, even if your opponents are at full build too. You can't reliably get two big MR items. Like, you can have uh, like an Aegis on one guy and like a Banshee's on everyone else, but that's not going to do as much as Death Cap, Void Staff, Zonia's Hourglass, everything else. So uh, the actual impact of those javelins relative to opponent health bars actually goes up over time. Um, even if you did buy more MR, then you died a hood stomp. So, um, and even beyond all that, I think Graves is better late game than Lucian in the first place. He's an attack speed steroid. So, uh, this is a this is a scary thing for Frank Van Gaming. They can't make their way in against a poke comp here. It's got to be the Oriana ball again. Baby Zeus, he's going to have to see if he can get that off. Well, it takes some damage, but he just kind of takes out the champion damage in the skills. So that turret does finally fall, and Law Pro will get their way in a little bit farther. 2.4 thousand in the lead now. It's bigger than it was before. I think it's the biggest lead of the game. Captain Ziploc takes his stun, so he can't really easily follow the Q. Goes in now, actually, kicks and kicks back. Heaven Time back. He's going to uh, repel into the air. Shockwave hits two. This could be the fight for Frank Game. They pull in Hanser, and there's the ulti and two-man hit from low. And they're going to go in towards Baby, who's been stunned up. He's going to go down. That's a kill picked up, too, actually, as the Javelin comes by, but they trade one back on Hanser. The chase still going low. He's going to get away from that one, and they pick up now Captain oh, Ziploc as well. Baby, he's got to be real careful. They're going to find the AD carry as well. One more Javelin. Can they get it? The slow is there. Lon, can he land it? Quadra kill! For Lod and they break in. The newest member of that team, Hoodstomp, coming up big. Lod moving from AD carry to mid, showing that he's got great prowess on that Cougar. 100% kill participation. They get themselves that tier two and an inhibitor turret. They crack the base so early on, pretty much about 37 minutes sooner than last game. Yep, and this is looking pretty good for Law Pro now. Captain Ziploc just got over eager here. He had the flash kick backwards, which worked out pretty well for them. And then there was the shockwave onto two. But here's the thing, Hood Stomp off on the side. He's doing so much damage, he gets the stun onto Baby Eater, procs it, and Lod is just poking the entire time. Just from the back line, jumps in, flashes in, gets all of this damage off. And the great flash Q here from low to set up Lod for that final kill. Yep. Lod hit five javelins in a row that fight. He actually went on the on like the side of the fight, tunneled it on Nien, killed him in two javelins, and then just kind of moved forward down the line. The fact that he's actually able to reach and kill the squishies in a fight like that is really important. And a big thing too is it looks like Hoodstomp's going for a caster AD type build here. Yeah. He's got the armor penetration, and last time we saw his Draven and he went full armor penetration, it's because he didn't want to be anywhere near the front line. He's like, I'm just going to be a caster. I'm going to... I remember hearing from him after that mm -hmm. game where he played Draven. He's like, yeah, what am I going to do against this team composition? I'm wait I'm playing a low range AD carry that needs to stay in the back. I will just throw out my ultimate, hope it does as much damage as possible, throw out some abilities, and then clean up afterwards. 
Like, he just wants to get his, them low so that other people can start finishing it off, and then he'll come in later. Well, it's interesting, Basic though, because it's, you know, I mean, Lulpro doesn't necessarily have to play a very late game sort of build, so if it pays off, then it's good for them. Uh, you know, he can just push people out of the stage of the game, and if they can close the game in 35 minutes and the build pays off, we'll see. And right now it is looking good for this team. They're going to push in now towards the mid inhibitor. They're showing no fear really at all. Smokescreen comes out, not a big deal. Doesn't land the slow, but this inhibitor taking some damage and Frank Fang Gaming not able to make their way in. A couple shots from dead. They've got to back off right now for the ball, but Haunter's still seeing around. It's a good shot with onto three. Big burst comes through. There's the ulti in from Graves, and there's a jump in from Haunter. Can they get any kills? Not so far. And actually one for zero. Frank Fang Gaming firing back, forcing the heal, forcing the flash, forcing Lolpro to run away. The slow's coming out on all sides. Can they get any kills through low? Tries to keep his team alive best he can. Forced to back off now. Franklin Gaming lose inhibitor, but they get a kill. And they still have this Nidalee around. It's very dangerous to go out this far. Latman, not in safe territory. He's got to be real careful. Going for Wolves to get some money back in. It looks like he'll be okay. No one's going to try to contest him on this one, even though we got Cian walking into the jungle. But it's going to give Lol Pro some pause while FFG will be able to sit inside their base and try to farm a little bit more. And now Dragon also picked up with FFG staying inside their base. Now Frank Fang Gaming finding themselves in the same position that LOL Pro was in last game, but they don't have a late game team composition aside from Orianna. Really, Graves is going to outscale, Nidalee's going Ooh. to outscale, and now they're going for the Baron, but it looks like they were seeing a tiny bit. Oh yeah, I mean, anytime you clear a pink ward on top of Baron, you always gotta like look for it. Pink ward's coming down to make sure there's nothing spotted, but there's the wards over the wall. FFG forced to run away. Nice attempt, but it's not gonna pay off here. Now Law Pro, they've got minions starting to push in towards the mid lane that will eventually require attention by FFG. Mm. And they can contest Baron instead. Yeah, they just dumped about 300 gold in pink wards straight into that, and they're getting nothing for it in terms of objectives. Yeah, Law's taking the blue buff while mid lane's getting pushed while his team sweeps away wards. Like, how strong is Lawpro? They're not even using the mid laner who's 6 0 1, and FFG is still scared. Oh, Captain Ziploc goes in again. All right, a little bit more fearless this time for Ziploc there, but again, they're not finding their way in. I mean, that was a literal 5 on 3, and FFG didn't try anything. Well, their base is going to have super minions in it yep. right now. Haunts are two levels up on Nian Tan, so he can duel him right now. Yeah, it's going to look pretty good him. for him. Ruin King is available right now for Shivana. If she turns this around, she can get a big burst on Nian. But they've got to be aware of everything else. Javelin not going to hit much, but Ward's being killed off. Lol Pro look real good. Javelin's in from the darkness. Minions look like they won't kill anything. So it looks like the respawning waves will be just enough here for FFG. Oh, Planet, I hit that man. That was very close. There's a TP though in the middle oh. of the team. Man, what are you doing? He's going to go down right away. Three man shockwave, but Lalpro have complete control. The ulti, the burst coming in, and it's FFG being routed, trying to run away, but Latman's got nowhere to go. Doesn't reach the lantern in time. Double kill now for El for a lot. 8 0 and 1, and they're going to keep on pushing. We're going to get this tier 2 inhibitor, or tier 2 turret, possibly the inhibitor turret, but no, they're going to pull off and go for the bear, and that is the right call to get that off the map and make it so that Frank Fang Gaming can't contest it like they wanted to. So now a big giant minion wave right in the middle of the base is going to mean all of FFG's attention is spent over there, and that will be an uncontested Baron now. Well earned. Yeah, that TP right onto all of them right there, not communicated 100%. Instantaneously gets blown up. The Shockwave lands on a three, but the Spears coming across. The Javelin's doing so much damage from Lot showing that their priority on Braum as well as the Nidalee is very well, very well uh, suited mm -hmm. for the team. Looking great so far. So Baron buff picked up, the mid lane was defended, and Hib coming up in the very, very near future. And Captain Ziploc going to go ahead and give red buff over to Latman. Two item 80 carry versus, I guess it's kind of three items for his <laughs> stomp. He hasn't actually bought in a long time, though. He's had that build for a while. He's just now back, picks up Yomus. Okay. So he's going for the penetration, he's going straight for... I'll just cast some spells as Graves yeah. be the AD caster, as opposed to a marksman. Sure. Well, it's working out for him, to be fair. I mean, he's got a bunch of assists, which is fine when your teammates are getting killed with long-range javelins, like that. He gets his shields don't really replenish the health. Yeah, that was below 50% off of a single spear, because it's an 8-0-1 Nidalee here from Laud. Baby Zeus didn't keep him down in lane at all. He's down about 30 CS, but he has been roaming around, got the quadra kill for himself earlier. Laud, his transition to the mid lane has been fantastic. Absolutely has. I gotta say, Law Pro look 
really scary. This is a team that had a very mediocre uh, spring run. Yes. Didn't even make it to the playoffs. They, they had no great scores overall. But this squad, just the changes here, they're, get, they're about to make the finals. Yes. From the addition of Hoodstomp and the move of Lod, coming up huge. Think about all the teams that made the finals of uh, Spring NA Challenger. Cloud9, Tempest, Complexity, and LMQ, two of which actually made it into the LCS. Lolfro gonna be the, uh, I guess, the fourth team now to ever make the Challenger Finals if they can close this game out. Gonna go for the minute inhibitor, one man shock of a hood stop. Captain Ziklock is gonna kick him into the team, but is it gonna be enough damage? Baby, there's being locked up in the back line. Haunts are doing everything, and Hoodstop finds the kill onto the jungler. There's the ulti coming in, triple kill now for Hoodstop, but they've made their way into the base inhibitor just now going down. Oh, they're gonna keep gonna chasing get, it, Baby it Eater, door? taking some damage. I mean, it's only three so far. They're into the fountain now at this point. Hoodstop, the hook comes in, he's healing up in the fountain, and they are going to stay safe, but the buildings are not going to be. They cannot retreat. Inhibitor turret number one goes down. Inhibitor number two now under fire as well. This is going to be the game 30 and a half minutes in, and Team Law Pro are headed to London for the Summer Series 1 Finals. Very well played by them, ending the game in half the time this time. Yeah. The Nidalee getting the Braum. Hoodstop played that perfectly as an AD caster when they got ahead. The triple kill coming out there just sprayed across multiple multiple enemies there yeah. with the buckshot, collateral damage. Very well played there by all of LOL Pro across the board. Yeah, I gotta say, that was a great game. And just to compare the differences too, right? How good and how aggressive and how decisive LOL Pro was saying, we have the lead. We know how to play our comp. Let's do that. They never even had to be worried about almost anything that entire game. Lee Sin tried some kickbacks. Ziploc had some good moves, but there was no follow-up. You had heals ready. You have Hauntzer ready to jump into the front lines and say, guys, hit me. I'm a tanky Shivana. I'm going to pull your people around, right? Tank all the damage right there. That was so effective. Law Pro played a great game from start to finish. I didn't see anything really wrong with them at all. No, the only thing is that that early dragon just went to Frank Fan Gaming, but that's just... Frank Van Gaming have to play that better after they get it. They have to yeah. reward the dragon and come back to it. The first dragon is the cheapest dragon. Mm -hmm. The second one is worth substantially more and just gets worth more and more after that. You have to get that first dragon transition into a second one, which will transition into more items and just yeah. keep snowballing it. Because the first one doesn't get you flat items. It gets you wards so you yeah. can make plays. It basically let uh, Nian recall back and get a second Doran's Ring and yeah. like a couple of potions. But yeah, it like you get this small little early game surge. Maybe you can buy a couple of things there. But realistically... It's still an up to your team to make plays and capitalize and kind of go further from there. And you're right, that really didn't happen for these guys. So, um, you know, very well done by Law Pro. Uh, Low, the shot color there, doing a great job putting his team in the right spot. I thought Hoodstomp played a phenomenal series there. Game one put the team on his back. Took a while, but events you get to 6 item Kogma, where you've sold a Static Shivana Trinity Force to buy Phantom Dancers instead, that's when you know you've reached late game. <laughs> is when you sell 7,000 gold worth of items to buy new ones. Uh, and he did a great job with that game overall. Uh, this one, Hoodstomp still played really well, but I got to hand it to Lod 8-0-4. Perfect record. 100% uh, kill, kill participation. participation. Two-thirds of the kills were his, because he earned them with Javelins. Again, Lod, new mid laner to the team, playing great. Yeah. He is playing phenomenally well. I always liked the Lod low combination down bottom, but apparently it wasn't working out that well. And I always liked him as an AD carry. Mm -hmm. I always liked him back, good. way back in like October when I started watching him. But then his transition to mid lane, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Because, yeah. damn. He's big. That, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Yep. I'd be like, damn, Lord of Damn. <laughs> Lord of Damn, those spears. That I, was crazy. Yep. The quadra kill and getting them off of spears is a nidalee. That's like stuff Bjergsen does in LCS. Oh, Lods is good. And, and it's great because he pulled a cinder band both games, right? He got, he got all oh, the... Oh, he's got a deeper champion pool than that. You got to yep. dig deep. And even though he's a new mid laner, right? The fact that you have an impressive champion pool, you're beating up your peers as new to the role is so... Like, that's just ludicrously impressive. Well, and I, I don't know if he can sing his praises enough. Maybe we're overdoing well, it, to be fair. I, I want to say, at the same time, people don't know his style yet. Sure. They don't know his champion pool yet. You're banning his Syndra, his Ziggs, and then they banned his Nidalee at first, and then they swapped it over for the Yasuo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, other way around. Other way around. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, other, sorry. Team. Totally other team. Other team. Uh, they, they added the Kale ban away from yes. Hanser, allowing Nidalee to come through. And that was even scary. Yes. Realistically. Just, there. They banned his Syndra away. They didn't want him to have that. But he's like, I got Lulu. I got Ziggs. I got Nidalee. I got all these other things that I can play around with. You can't ban me out. Didn't happen. Nope. Did a great job. So congratulations there to that one. Now with that match, now officially history. Let's check out uh, our bracketology. 
and see how it got recorded. So even though they lost today, Frank Fang Gaming will be battling for third place. And if they win that automatic requalification into Summer Series 2 on Thursday, June 19th, after the North American LCS. And with their victory today, Team Lol Pro has advanced to the Summer 1 Finals in London on Sunday, June 22nd, right before the EU LCS. They will face the winner of tomorrow's match between Team Coast and Curse Academy. And before that series, the North American LCS wraps up Week 4. It all starts at 12 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 9 p.m. Central Europe. European summertime when Curse takes on LMQ, then Complexity battles Team Solo Mid. And after that, Counter Logic Gaming goes up against Evil Geniuses and Cloud9 takes on Dignitas. And so with that, we reach the end of our time together tonight. But before we go, I want to say thanks again to our friends at Coca-Cola. Now for myself, Zyrene, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching. Good night and GG.